Hello, this is the Easy Self Host channel. In today's video, we're trying a few link shortener apps. These apps turn long, complex URLs into short links that are easy to remember and easy to share. If you've watched my previous videos, you probably noticed I use short links that start with easysh.link. Beyond convenience, short links give me visibility into usage, including how many times they are used and where people click those links. In my search for the right app, I tried a few URLs, Schlink, Slash, and Snap. They all share the core feature of creating short links that redirect to the original URL, but each one has its own focus. For this video, I'll quickly go over the Docker Compose for each app and focus more on the app itself. You can find the detailed configuration files in the description below. The first app is URLs, the classic link shortener with a great ecosystem of plugins. The Docker Compose for URLs has two services, the URL server and MariaDB. In the URLs environment section, we can set the database credentials and the admin credentials. The actual values are stored in the .env file. In this setup, I added a few settings to make MariaDB use less memory than the default configuration. In the proxy configuration, I route the host easysh.link to the URL service on port 8080. To access the URL's admin interface, go to easysh.link slash admin. From here, log in with the username and password we configured in the Docker Compose. URLs has a very simple UI. At the top, we can create short links by entering the destination URL and then the slug. Click the button and we have a short link. Let's copy the short link and try it in the browser. It works. Many features in URLs are provided by plugins, which we can find through Manage Plugins. There are some pre-installed plugins. The first one enables hyphens and short links, which are definitely turned on. I also enable random short URLs. There are more plugins built by the community. Back to creating short links. Next, I want to demonstrate the metrics for link usage. Here I'll create a short link for the Docker configuration from my last video. In the description of my video, we can click this link. Back in URLs, we can see the clicks count increase. We can open the metrics to see a list of statistics like traffic patterns and the referrals. As we can see, the traffic is from YouTube. That's all for URLs. Next up, we have Schlink, another popular link shortener app. Here's the Docker Compose for Schlink. Schlink separates the link endpoint from the admin endpoint, which I really like. The Schlink server only handles redirects and exposes an API for admin operations. Schlink Web Client is the UI for admin tasks. Schlink also requires a database like Postgres. In this configuration, we set an API key in the Schlink server, which the web client then uses. In the proxy configuration, we need two domains, one for Schlink server and one for the web client. I'll use easysh.link for Schlink and schlink.easysh.app for the web client. Now, if we go to easysh.link directly, we'll get an 404 because nothing's configured yet. Instead, go to schlink.easysh.app to access the web client. The web client is pre-configured with the endpoint and the API key, so we can start creating short links right away. Enter the destination URL and the slug, and we'll get a short link. Let's test it by visiting the short link directly. Schlink also collects metrics on link usage. I'll create the same link that's in the description of my video. Let's click that link on YouTube. Then we can view the metrics in the Schlink web client. It also shows metrics like device and referrals. We can customize Schlink a bit more. 
Under Manage Domains, we can set the base URL redirect. For example, I want the base URL easysh.link to redirect to my homepage easyselfhost.com. You can also customize the 404 page. That's all for Schlink. Next, we have Snap, a newer app than the previous two. In this Docker Compose, we can use SQLite to store data, though it also supports Postgres. Here, we configure the admin username and password in the .env file. For proxy rule, we need to proxy the domain to Snap service at port 3000. For Snap, go to easysh.link slash admin to open the admin page. Let's go to the dashboard and log in with the username and the password set in Docker Compose. Snap has a more modern UI. I'll switch to the light theme to stay consistent with the video. Then let's create a short link. The process is similar to other apps. And we will quickly test it. Next, for metrics, let's test with the same link. It also shows basic click metrics. For more detailed metrics, we need to go to the metrics tab, which is a bit confusing at first. Here we can group metrics by presets. Snap also supports restricting access to a link. Here are two ways to do it. First, when creating the link, we can toggle set secret and specify the secret. Anyone visiting the link must enter the same value before being redirected. Snap supports multi-user and we can create groups. When creating a link, in the advanced tab, we can specify which group can access the link. That's all for Snap. Finally, we have another app called Slash, a bit different from the others in this video. I think Slash is more workspace or personal focus than public sharing. The Docker Compose for Slash is very simple. Slash uses SQLite for storage, so there's only one service. Admin credential as set on first access, so there's no extra configuration required. For the proxy configuration, point the domain to slash service on port 5231. Once slash is up, let's visit the domain. Here we'll register our admin account. After logging in, let's create a short link. By default, links are not public to the internet which means the short link is only accessible to users who are logged in into Slash. Now let's open the short link. Notice that Slash adds an s slash prefix, which makes the link slightly longer. Let's also try non-public modes in Slash. We'll create a short link for a non-public document. If we access this link from a browser that isn't logged into Slash, will get a 404 page. What makes Slash unique is its browser extension. The extension lets you use s slash something without the domain prefix. Let's install the browser extension and configure it with our slash endpoint. After that, we can tap s slash ytb in the browser and it will navigate to the full short link. This works not only in the address bar, but also on web pages. For example, in a document, we can link to s slash something and clicking it works too. If you plan to use slash, know that the default version isn't 100% free. It has a subscription and the free tier has some restrictions. Even though it's open source and the license doesn't appear to restrict code modification. That's all I want to share today. Personally, I ended up choosing Schlink to power easysh.link because I like that the endpoint itself doesn't offer any admin UI. I also plan to use Slash at home to manage links for quick access. That's all for this video. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing for more self-hosting content. You can find links to the configuration files I use in the description below. Thank you for watching.